Thank you very much. So we have a couple minutes, but should we just start getting to know each other a little bit? I did a quick look and uh, I saw some of the attendees list. I can see that we have a mixed bag of vocations. Uh, we have students, we have uh, execs, we have people from uh, universities. I saw somebody from ITU, my alma mater, and someone from DTU should be here as well, which is where I currently teach. And I saw that there was a lot of marketing people, a lot of PR, pretty logical in social media. But um, why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about yourselves? Uh, anybody want to offer some information? Why are you here? I'm pretty sure it's voluntary, so why are you here? Sounded interesting. Okay. You're looking for something new to do with the social media strategies or you're interested in being more effective, perhaps? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? There you go. Thanks, guys. Way to give some energy. I like that. All right. Well, let's, let's jump right into it. Um, my name is Lori Webb. Um, I wasn't sure if somebody was going to do an intro uh, of me, but please do. Oh, no, I was just talking. Please do the intro. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Yes. It's not easy, but. All right, thanks. I'm going to take this moment and I really enjoy that I stopped your flow there for a second. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for coming to Social Media Week Copenhagen, yet another session here at the MASK headquarters. Again, I'm going to say uh, a big thank you to MASK for hosting Social Media Week Copenhagen again. Uh, we've been working with them for three years now, and it's always a pleasure being here. Uh, and uh, let's behave really nicely so we get invited back next year. Um, so. Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting. I'm actually really want to sit in on this one, even though I have to kind of run around. I'm the guy behind Social Media Week, so I kind of have to run in and out a little bit. But uh, this one, I think we're all familiar with the, uh, you know, the business canvas, and, and seeing that being applied to social media kind of makes it really, really in interesting. I think a lot of us might be a little bit curious about if we can get that ROI in there and, and see where we can have that. So that's what I'm going to be looking for, and I'm really looking forward to hear Laurie talk. She has uh, been around the block. She has written books. She has spoken basically all over the world. And uh, now we have the pleasure of having you here. So welcome to Laurie. Thank you. Thanks, Mass. OK. So the social media canvas. I did want you to first do this. Check the, uh, the hashtag. Those are other hashtags also that you're going to want to use uh, throughout the whole week. But uh, for this course, it's SM. C-A-N-V-A-S. And I actually made a Twitter list. I've started a Twitter list. I didn't have time to actually start adding people. But if you follow it and I see you're following it, I will add you to the list. Or I can check it. But it, that's the best way to do it. Then I know that there is uh, no misuse of your information. So feel free to do that. Then we have a list. And hopefully you'll get a chance to connect and use the opportunity. It's social media week, so you should be energetic about connecting with people and, and trying to get your, your, um, your profiles uh, activated and you know, personally and professionally. See who you can connect with across all the different platforms and, and uh, let's see some conversations. I look forward to talking to you after this as well. So why the social media canvas? This actually happened because of this. This is not a mistake, but social media is a blank canvas. There is so many opportunities. There are so many ways that we use social media uh, over the last many, many years. Just off the top of your, off the top of my head, anyway. I was going to start asking you questions, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to be as interactive as I would be because otherwise we could start going on a long walk into the country. And I could easily do that on my own. So we'll keep to, to task. And I'll just answer some of the, the possibilities. What is social media? Well, social media is currently, it's news. It's how we get news. It's how we listen to 
uh, what's happening across the globe. It's how we connect with family members who might not be close to us. It's how we find out about children being born and about, unfortunately, people passing. It's a cheerleading, uh, cheerleading area, arena, where we can get pats on the back for the things that we do. It's a cookbook. It's where you can get recipes. It's a TV station. It's a uh, emergency uh, signal when there are bad accidents or tragedies happening around the world or in our own communities. When the weather's bad, you go to Twitter and you find out what's happening, especially Twitter, because that's the fast track, right? So it's a lot of possibilities. And from working with social media for so many years and also working with the Business Model Canvas, I thought, wait a minute, let's look at this and see how we can combine it. Business Model Canvas uses design thinking, and design thinking utilizes these three elements, and it's about desirability, it's about feasibility, and it's about viability. Now, the Canvas, and I'm only using this basic canvas. I'm not actually, I haven't thrown up the, the actual business model canvas, but I am doing a head nod to the uh, business model generation book and Alex Ostevet and Yves Pignure. I cannot pronounce their names, but I do know them. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so the, uh, the canvas here that I've illustrated, these are color coded. And so the middle part is the connection value. That's where the value proposition would be. And so the connection value is, is, of course, where the three rings come together. On the left-hand side, that's the feasibility. So that's your internal structures of how you deliver on that value. And the right side, the, yeah, the right side, the right side for you, is the desirability. So that is what is the external. So what is it that your audience, your connections, your clients are interested in? What is the possible market value that can be gained from focusing on this area? And at the bottom, we have the viability. Now, the connection value is like this. It's like a fine wine. Things have to come together. Sometimes those uh, returns take long, longer than initially anticipated. You don't just start stepping on some grapes and expect to, to uh, have a, a, a nice glass of wine. So it's timing, it's terroir, it's all of those elements that come together ultimately to create the connection value. We're going to go into each like step by step. I'm just doing a quick overview and then you can ask me questions and and uh, we'll go into it a little bit deeper as much as we can in the time frame that we have. Desirability. So what is the desirability element? That is that section that I talked about on the right side of the canvas. It's what is it that your connections are interested in making? What is it that they can uh, gain from what you have? And since this is just like an introduction to what this could be, because this is just an experimental model that I've created based on, on the business model canvas and my experience with social media. And so I really would welcome your feedback as to how you think it applies and how it works and what you think we should tweak to make it even better. But this is really critical because of the fact that how clear are you on your connections? The connections are who are you trying to connect with? Now, that's like customer segments, right? So this could be your clients. I was telling you about that white canvas that social media is, and it can be everything. And so it can also be an extension of your uh, HR department. So it's a way of recruiting new, new talent to your agency. So of course, how you go about connecting with them is going to be very different with how you would connect with a person that you're trying to sell something to, or how you would connect with maybe your own employees out in the field or when they're not in your office, or how you would uh, connect with students. What they're looking for, this is the relationship aspect, 
you know, they have uh, customer relations. And the reason I have this is that this is about connection. They're looking for new ways to connect. The, the social media landscape is so overwrought with same old, same old, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, back in the day, in the early days of social media, it was easy to put a message out there and get some traction to get seen and connect with some of the big influencers in the social media arena. Uh, big authors, big uh, scientists, all kinds of people because they were there and there wasn't a lot of noise. But like with many things, I'll, I come from New York City and I think of what has happened over the years with, in New York City, how the artist would show up in a community, it would usually a rundown community, and the artist would go there, that's all they could afford, they'd get lofts, they'd start making them cool, and the people with the money would come in, price out the poor artist, and then they were out again. And then they'd have to find a new place, and it just kept doing that and doing that. And that's kind of what's happening in social media. Now there's a lot of, I mean, just think of your own f Facebook feed. I mean, there's a, a lot of the people that you connected, the reason that you got on Facebook and started connecting with people on Facebook most likely are not what you're actually experiencing today. I'm, I, okay, I have quite a few people that I'm connected to in the social media space, but sometimes I go on Facebook and I'm like thinking, like, where are my friends? Like, my real friends? Like, you know, what's happening? You know, there's, time can go by and, and you just don't know what's happening. You're seeing, you know, ads or people are always trying to sell you something. Uh, that's how you have to look at what's actually happening in the space and how you can do something different to get your point across. Delivery paths. I'm gonna need a glass of water here. Wow. The delivery paths, that's your channels. So how do the people you're trying to connect with, how do they like to What's their style? We were talking about fresh approaches. And what is the style of communication? So are they visual people? Are they audio people? Are they interested in fast pace? Are they interested in slow? Are they interested in you know, seeing you doing talking heads? Are they interested in, in action? Are they interested in behind the scenes? Are they interested in finding out just tutorials? Are they interested in you know, A, B, or C. That's your job, of course, to find out. And I would assume that, especially those of you who are working with this, um, do have a, an idea. This is not as simple, maybe, as it, it looks uh, when, when you put it all together. But you can tell me afterwards when, we're, when we get through the whole thing. We're now on the other side. We're on the feasibility side, which is the internal uh, section of the canvas now. So you can see it here. And that deals with this section over here. So typically, that would have been key partners. And it would have been key activities and key resources. So key partners is this. Who's making the honey? Now, what does that mean? Who's making the honey? OK, when you think of key partners, often people think of management or the boss, so who is telling you how to run your social media program? Who's creating the strategy? Who are the key players who are connected to how you create that strategy? Who are you working with? Who are you networking with? Who are you uh, doing affiliate programs with, et cetera, et cetera? But at the end of the day, who makes the honey? Who makes the honey? <laughs> guys are a tough crowd. <laughs> The bees make the honey, right? The bees make the honey, and the bees make the honey for whom? The queen, right. So in this case, the queen is actually the value, the connection value, is what I'm saying. Everything should go back to serve that purpose that you're trying to c connect to make value. And the reason I say it's the bees making the honey for the queen is because the bees 
have a very well articulated way of working together. And social media is, in fact, social. And it's about relationships. So no matter what you're doing, no matter what industry you're, you're in, I would challenge you to consider when you're working your feasibility, when you're working your feasibility side or your strategies, that you integrate all the way throughout the organization so that you get different aspects. Also, because that's how you generate better content, is not just having one level, having a, ooh, we have a social media person, they'll take care of that. But you have stories in your, in your organizations. You have people who, you know, are living lives, who, you know, are experiencing things in different ways, and they can share that, and that makes for the fresh orange that I showed you, that, that fresh approach. It's mixing it up, and it's having lots to pull from. And how you actually use that, that's, of course, more uh, depth in-depth strategy, but how you can integrate that to pull it to create a, a content curation dump, so to speak. And then you can filter it to, to, um, to go out through the social media manager or channels like that. Okay. Um, another water break, I think. Um, consistent action. And the reason for that is instead of key actions, social media and working with, so, with relationships, it's not just about doing one key thing or doing things specifically. It's actually you get traction from doing things over and over again. You have to be consistent. You need to deliver. Uh, just as an example, I have over the years, because when I got on Twitter, uh, this is my example, when I got on Twitter, I was all gung-ho and was, you know, racking, oh, wow, okay, now I'm up to 1,000, now I'm up to 2,000, wow, boom. And it was going really fast, and then I kind of chilled, started doing other stuff. And over the last couple of years, I have lost 3,000 followers because I stopped tweeting as much as I was doing. And that's the thing is that, you know, you have to know which, if for each social media, there's, this is a whole different game. We're not going to go into this talk right now, but it's kind of what I call social media school, social media math, social media uh, vocabulary, all those things that connect. And it's knowing what the message is and how often you should be connecting on each platform because people like, you know, uh, to be the touch points vary from platform to platform. Any questions? Okay, so the core resources. Your core resources are much like this picture, hills, valleys, water, it's all kinds of different things. You're going to be looking for content, like I said, with your bees. Your bees can be in your organization, your bees can be your, your broader network. Look to add more value to connect both sides of the canvas. So you can start with your own company or your own organization or your own school and think, what do we do that makes us unique? What makes us special? What do we want to communicate? Maybe you're sharing something that, you know, let's say um, in the educational uh, arena, that you're working on a breakthrough PhD uh, dissertation. And so you can't really be led from a social media standpoint from your connections. You're the one who is the expert. You're the one who has the information. You have to look to what they are actually desiring, what they need. But at the end of the day, you're the one who knows what to bring. You're the expert who knows how they should be introduced to this. And then you work together. You find the sweet spot with combining what they want and what you know to give extra connection value. So now to viability. This is probably where you guys are most interested. <laughs> the viability is varied and lush. And I take it in a broader sense because it's, not, it's actually not just about money, although money plays a role because it has to be sustainable. Social media is also something that has um, made me laugh 
over and over again because people, oh, it's, you know, it's so great because social media is free. It's free, but the thing, <laughs> it's free in terms of, you might not have to pay to get on the platforms. You, you might not have to, it, well, now things are different because it's changed over time. Now you're actually starting to pay to be on the platforms in a big way. But the thing that you lose the most in social media is time. And that's the only thing you can't get back. And energy. When you have people suddenly going into the black hole of Facebook or, you know, just trying programs or campaigns of things that are just not going anywhere. So you have to be very careful about how you, you utilize that and figure out what is the cost of engagement. What does it actually cost us to have a designated department? Obviously, that's easy to figure out if you're in a company because you're, you're watching the bottom line. You know how much your employees cost. But the thing is, you should be considering also not just how much it's costing them in, you know, you're paying them a wage, but also to consider how much psychological time is it costing? Because it's not, okay, I work social media from nine to five. There are things that are happening through social media. So how do you work with that? And how it's, it's, it's a question of being overwhelmed and managing that, over, uh, that overwhelm, as it were. So how do you use, what's, what's important to the time, to the resources that you're using, the, um, the, the range of, of information that you have to get, where you're pooling the, the, uh, the content, et cetera, et cetera, right? And on the other end, this is the return on engagement. I would have had you sing this, but um, I can see that that clearly is not going to happen. <laughs> but the reason I use Bob Marley here is because when you're looking for your return on engagement, when you're trying to figure it out, it is a don't worry about a thing because you have a feedback loop. Because as you're going through it, if you go around, I started off with the canvas in the, the much like the um, original business model canvas. But at the end, I decided that that actually doesn't quite fit because it's an iterative pro process. You're always going around and around. You always have to go from one to the other. And if you're going through your return, if you're spending time on social media and you're just aiming to get, you know, I, I just want 10,000 people to follow me. You know, I have this desire it, by the end of, of um, yeah, by the end of next month, then I want 5,000 extra followers on Twitter. Let's say, I'm just gonna do that. Is that a smart strategy? Do you think? No, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I have 5,000 followers, if I don't know what I'm doing with them, if I'm just spending a lot of time catering to them and they're not even the right fit. They're not aligned with my mission, they're not aligned with my message, they don't dig me. They're not even, you know, they're just kind of, they, they sign, they're, they're here, here today, gone tomorrow kind of followers. So it's not just a question of number, like mass. And this is something that's also been, it's pretty prevalent now, I would say, that it's not just about this anymore. It is, it's more focusing, it's more getting, it's better to have 100 good followers than to have oodles and oodles of people who don't really matter. Also because you spend a lot of time servicing them. You know, resp responding back to things and ending in endless dialogue on Facebook posts or LinkedIn groups, answering questions on Quora or wherever you are at. You can spend a lot of time, so you have to know specifically why you're using that time. So this is kind of all of the things together, uh, the way that uh, I've switched it compared to the business model canvas. I'll let you take a picture, let's take some pictures and I'll take a drink. Are you guys ready to sing now?
And so we get to the sky is the limit. And you have all kinds of possibilities, I think, with this canvas, just like the business model canvas, if you've read business model generation, it's how you approach it. So if you start off, we'll go back to this for a second. So depending on what your, what your aim is, you might start here with the people. You might start with the influencers. And the influencers, it may seem kind of counterintuitive. You're thinking, influencers, don't you mean like the, shouldn't they be over here? Shouldn't be, you know, I'm not talking about media darlings and people who influence the external, but I'm thinking who inf the people who actually influence the bees, the whole community, who influence your messaging. So I chose to, to use those words the way that I did because I had a specific idea. It was not random. <laughs> wow. But if you start with the people that you have, so who do you have in your organization? What, can, what do you have to offer? What are you looking to do? You start looking at the core actions. You think, okay, let's look at what the market or what the external group, if, if it's an audience or if it's, you know, if you're an author, you might be looking at your audience. Or if you're a scientist, you might be looking to get people that you want to test. <laughs> Mad professor. Uh, <laughs> that sounded a little crazy. That, maybe that wasn't the best example. But it could be. Um, this I'm going to give you, uh, and then I'm going to go, actually I'm going to pass it by and come back to it. Because this is the model that I created after the original model. And I really would like to hear your thoughts on this because the idea that it was flat, it kind of felt like, it kind of felt like the world back in the day when they actually thought it was flat. That's the difference. This is the real world. The real world is round. And it's iterative in the way that social media happens because things are evolving all the time very rapidly. So my proposal is that we start with the connections in this scenario and you can rotate it. So you can actually, if you roll it, then suddenly influence, influencers will be on the top and then you just follow the wheel, right? And the wheel is enclosed with the viability crust, so to speak, <laughs> to protect the protective coating for the connection value because none of it will work if it's not viable, right? So viable in that, yay, let's go into social media really big this year. Let's, uh, you know, we hear that it's everybody should be making videos and putting videos everywhere, right? That's what you got to do. So your team says, yeah, we need the best equipment. You go out, you get 10 uh, GoPro, Go, Go, Go 3 Pro, what, what, you know, the camp, what is it called? Okay, GoPro, suddenly. Uh, and you, you're spending all this money and you, you know, you got a sound, you know, you're going to build a sound studio, you're going to do all these things and you have this group, you know, because maybe you had an intern who was super techie and young and had all these aspirations and then he decides to go off to Guatemala for a year and, uh, you know, learn Spanish. And you're sitting there with all this money that you invested and you're at a stop, a standstill, right? So you want to consider the cost of engagement with what's your return on engagement. Remember the Bob Marley? You're getting the feedback. So that loop will continue to go around and around. And then you can just jump down. You go to the connections and you look at what's the connection style. Then down to the delivery path, the influencers, thinking, okay, now I know this top part, so how do I use my people and the resources of our organization doing some consistent actions? You can develop that. And the other thing is it goes cross. It, can, you, can you follow me like this? So if you think of the connections up here, there's a cross, there's the sweet spot, right, where the influencers, and because that's the people part, right? The influence, the external people, 
and the internal people. There's the X in the middle, right? And then outside, you have your connection style will, will, if you know the connection style, you'll know how to better use the resources internally, right? If you know how they like, if you know that your audience is 60 to 80, because that's going to be like your typical audience in this crowd, um, but it's 60 to 80. Chances are they're not going to be interested in watching a lot of uh, animated GIFs and a lot of, you know, videos and, and things. I'm sure they, they probably do sometimes, but you want to know that if they like being on Twitter, then you're going to invest your money on Twitter and getting good at that. I'm not saying that you have to be on all platforms. I'm not saying that you have to be on one. That depends on what you're trying to achieve. So it's, a, it's really, it's like the typical, I'm a designer, so it's a typical thing. I can't give you a quote. I got I, I to gotta talk to you. We got to figure out what it is that you're trying to do. It's like, how much for a web, how much for a web page? How much to do this? How much for a dress? You want to design a dress. Well, uh, is it a wedding dress? Is it an Oscar gown? Is it a go out Friday night? Is it, you know, go to work? Is it clean the house dress? Depends, right? How obvious is that? And then the consistent actions with the delivery path, again, those also work together. That if you know the delivery path, then you can set up systems because I think, wasn't Falcon Social also here? It's, yes, right. So with tools such as that, see, how did you like that? A nice little plug there, huh? But with tools that can automate your your social media, you, you have to know the, the path because there are lots of tools out there that you can use. And some of them, are, they each offer a little something different. And so to use them best is to know how your particular audience likes that. Okay, we, still, we have some time for some questions. Thoughts? Yes? So the whole analysis layer? Do you need a mic? Does she need a mic? Okay. So the whole analysis layer? Yes. Where, I mean, where do you get your feedback? It doesn't sort of show. Is it round on the cross as well? The analysis area, um, what are you? It's oh, the feedback loop. Okay, the question was, how do you, it, she was asking me if this crust, the protective crust, the viability zone, in this, the way that I did the model, is that the feedback, is that, where is the analysis to get this? Isn't that the question? That was kind of a strange paraphrasing I did there. Well, you're looking, you're, this is the very broad model, just like with Business Model Canvas, just like uh, when you're um, using uh, like a, a star model, when you're talking about organizational strategy. This is just the overview. And so you have tools that support each section. So this is not a done deal. This is not, okay, now I've gone through this for a half an hour and now go little birdies fly, use the social media canvas and life will be wonderful and I'll save you all sorts of money and time. I think you can apply it. I think you can take this right now. Um, hopefully it's stimulated some thought because that's the real key thing is just to, to think in another way. Um, and to realize that, like I, in, the, in the slide about the sky is the limit, there's so many different opportunities. Also the white canvas, a lot of people are doing same old, same old. It's the lemmings walking off the cliff. Everything is the same. It's so boring, um, largely boring to be on social media. I think in, in um, wow, that sounded really bad. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Um, I think... There's a lot, when I say that, I don't, I'm not detracting the statement because it, it's true to a certain extent. But I think there's a lot of exciting things happening in social media as well, definitely. But the large, ma the masses often just decide to do the same thing because it's easy. Oh, it worked for, you know, I saw that they did this, you know, I want to go viral. Well, why do you want to go viral? You know, what, what is it, when you're doing the analysis, back to your question, hopefully, is 
when you're doing the, uh, when, you're, when you're going through each section, the intersection is where you're, you're, you're pulling the analysis because you have measurement tools. Falcon Social, for example, again, plug again. Um, and I actually, they didn't even know I was going to even mention them. I, I, I saw them on the roster that they were there. But tools, there's lots of measure, you know, metrics. And so you can see if it's working for you. That's what, if you are using a lot of time on a platform, if you're using Facebook, you're using Facebook ads, right? You can see if it's working for you. And if it's not, then you adjust and continue. And you see, okay, well, we'll try this. And that's, that's a fairly logical approach to, to, to doing it. But you want to make sure that the, the cost and the, uh, the return is a little bit broader. It's not just, like I said, typically um, when people are looking at doing their social, making their social media plans, a lot of it is around how much money do we have to spend on social. And I would beg to say, beg to, beg to say, beg to differ, no. I would say that it's important that it goes beyond just the how much does it cost economic, how much money does it cost, but also how much are you losing from not, use, from not broadening it and using it for other things. The, one of the big trends is, for example, that now people are increasingly using social media as an extended arm of the human resource department. So you're thinking about that. You're always, you know, your, your brand is out there. And so if your employees are having a good time and showing everybody on, on social media, then when those ideal, ideal prospects are checking out social media or just, oh, wow, yeah, that was a company. I, I would really like to go work for them. Or I'd really like to go to school there. Or I would, you know, that's, that's uh, universities could be using that to show the campuses, show what are the activities, what kind of clubs do we have here, um, what's the, you know, the academic rigor and, you know, what makes this university better than the other universities or who do we collaborate with? Um, from a marketing standpoint, you want to show your clients what you can do. So it's your calling card. Like if, you're, if this is what you do, if you're a social media manager or you're a freelancer or a consultant, that's, that's obviously your calling card. So you show what you do through how you connect and what you're doing on social. A lot of times that's not the case. It's kind of a, a scenario of the cobbler and the, the cobbler's children have no shoes. You're so busy <laughs> serving clients that your own uh, profiles kind of lay, lay to waste. Other questions? Yes? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Well, this is actually, that's because you're not seeing the, this is not the, the full thing, which sounds a little cheap. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, really, I, I, I really do have nice clothes at home. I just didn't feel like putting them on. Um, I, actually, there is a method to the madness, and the reason I actually show, the, the reason I'm showing you this is exactly to have your feedback on it, but this is, uh, in 2000, I started at the IT University. So I've been working in, I was working in web design in the, in the 90s, and I've been around the globe. I've created design methods and, and things for cross-cultural communication. And in doing that, I started working with the iterative model, because that's how you design. 
And that's why it's a circle. It's not because I thought, oh, I know. He made a, he made a rectangle, so I'll make a triangle. I mean, I could have used a triangle, actually. But um, there was, I, was trying to, I was really trying to understand. I'm, I'm, really, I'm not saying this is done, but in, for example, actually, I have proof right here on the computer. You can see I've actually colored it in. It's color-coded, and it's set up. But the thing is, I just wanted, I, it's funny, because I also had a design teacher who once upon a time said, when you go to the class, you get out your computer, you're all excited. Yeah, we're going to work in Photoshop. We're going to work in you know, Illustrator, and everybody's ready to go. And he's like, turn off the computers. Get out a piece of paper and a pen. You have to sketch it out. It has to be raw, because the problem is, when you do this, people think it's finished. This is not the finished model. This is the draft, but I probably would have done, I would have served you better by actually drawing it. Because if I drew it, then you would have had more feeling like, oh, okay, this is just where she's headed, but this is not finished. But then I was sitting there, you know, tweaking it because I like it to look a certain way. But it's, I think that that makes so much sense, and that's why I started, because it is the social media canvas, because I did want it to be something that people could apply, because I think you can also take Osterwetler's model, and you can use it as a, like using the business model canvas and the social media canvas together. You could actually do an overlay and say, okay, this is where, if we're going to look at the business of it, we take, we take the Osterwalder model, which is essentially this with different words, um, and, okay, and his PhD behind it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not dissing Alex at all. But the, this, mod, this social media canvas, the original one, if you put that on top of it, then that's, that's a good way to be able to, uh, to combine the two to get, uh, and make it easier for people to understand. Like you said, hey, you guys, you remember the key activities? This is what it is here. So everybody's on the same page. Everyone has the same vocabulary. Also, uh, if, I don't know how deep you are into um, Osterwetter and the business model canvas, but it is about, I see you. Um, it is also about visual thinking, and this is also completely starving for for a visual, you know, design. You know, I, I did a, a presentation and I put pictures in it. In this case, in a workshop setting, we would have the big, we would have the uh, the poster just like they have, and you'd use post-it notes and you'd be, you know, with your colored pens and drawing. But this is again the introduction so it's just to give you a taste of what it is and to get some feedback from me so I can go home and tweak it some more and some more um, chances are when I work with it I'll be working with this one sometimes and sometimes I'll be working with the other one so back and forth depending but because it just it visually it makes sense to me but if it doesn't make sense to you either it's because I'm not clear enough about how I presented it for you, like if this doesn't, if the, the crosses don't make sense, then it needs to be more powerful so that you understand it. Or it could be, it's just not your cup of tea. I mean, that's, that's cool. Taking what? Okay. Other people, show of hands. Oh, okay. What are you showing your hands? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. My comment is, I like this one better than. Okay. How many people for the original? <laughs> uh, no, it's no. Seriously, this is this is research. This is research. Seriously, it's not. It's not. It's how many people like the the original one the most? How thought that was the easiest because you were. It's okay, cool. How many people like the, the round one? How many people don't like any of them? <laughs> okay. Um, can I take your question just a sec? Is it related to that one? Okay, your comment? The reason I like this one because, as you mentioned, it's, it's a real way you can start from any, any other aspect, not just in the research, but in the other cases. So, depending upon what organization you are and what is important, so you can turn the wheel around so you can start from that and just go around. And again, here, the return on engagement and the process, that's the main thing. 
thing that's circling around the whole concept, and that's the most aspect, important aspect, I see. Because besides that, if whatever you do, if you don't have it done, and you didn't manage to don't measure what's the cost, then ultimately you will not know where you are, so it's just going on, right? That's, that's the most important aspect, covering around the whole concept. So I kind of like this now. Thank you. Besides that, it's, uh, it's boring. <laughs> it's, it's a it's it's a color it, color it in. Okay, um, I'm sorry you waited a long time for your question. No worries. Uh, yeah, I, I more have a, also a comment, and it was a counter comment to the previous one. I think that you can actually, well, of course you can use both of these uh, models, but I think that this applies more to the way social media is uh, uh, is working in today's uh, world. And, even though public social is not supporting this or like uh, sponsoring this, <laughs> uh, this is also the way that we think within our organization that you know when when people buy our product, we're always explaining this kind of cycle of content. Mm -hmm. It starts from processes and then goes to like finding the right uh, networks to be online mm -hmm. on and uh, where you're actually delivering your content, and then you evaluate it. Mm -hmm. And then you evaluate how is it working? Are you actually achieving those objectives that you have set and you have your KPIs? And then you go around the entire cycle again. You reevaluate, you reallocate your uh, resources, and you change your system to get to the best possible cycle. So uh, I think that this is just like the way that you can see the old uh, business model. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that we are used to doing it, and of course it feels more familiar. Mm -hmm. But this is the way that uh, the faster social media cycle is actually working. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is updated first. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. Well, the, <laughs> that's funny. Um, he did just make a new book, by the way. It's a value proposition. But um, to his uh, defense, so to speak, I didn't realize that I was going to suddenly end up in, in, in this, <laughs> this thing with um, Osterwalder. But if you read the book, if you are into the, the literature, if you're actually into uh, business model canvas, business model generation, they show various case studies. They show how, the, how they take the map and they go, should we go back to the, maybe you guys are just influenced because of the fact that I had the circle. So now that I'm here, everyone's going to, I really like this one so much better. Um, but remember when we were talking about how it depends on what you're aiming to do. So you can, uh, depending on what kind of business model you're creating, you can start with the key partners. If that's what you're, like a lot of times, think of Startup Weekend. See, now we're, now we're actually in Ostevetna. We're not in... Lori's little social media canvas. But Startup Weekend is about getting the right players to get, like you, you pool people together to create the value. So you're starting with, that's what you have. You have your people and you have, you have your key partners and your resources. And then from there, you branch out. And sometimes you're starting with the customer. The customer has a problem. Um, in your organization, uh, you have, a, you have a, a customer service line, right? And a customer lets you know through, through one of the social networks that your, um, your vacuum cleaner isn't actually working as it was supposed to. And now my dog has, <laughs> has a big bald spot on the right side of his body. I have no dog. So anyway, do, but the point is, is that you have that opportunity to to just move, you can move around on the canvas. And depending on what you're focused on, that's how you, you have a start point and then you branch out. But that's, that's not continuing that same cycle and that's why I went the other direction. But you can, it, it is actually set up to go different directions. Um, funny, funnily enough, the, um, in my world, the, uh, the in interaction designer world, um, somebody <laughs> wrote a big rant about business model canvases. I don't understand why, as an English-speaking person, he starts with the customer on this side. So he made his own canvas, and he reversed it. Because he says, if you read right to left, no, left to right, yes, 
in the Western world, then if you're user focused, then wouldn't you start with the customer? And not, I mean, that, I was like, yeah. So, so your, the presentation at around 12 a.m. two days ago had this model flipped. And I thought, oh no, now I'm just really, <laughs> no. That's gonna confuse them. Uh, because they're gonna say, but that's not how it is. And you're, you know, you're changing the ter too many changes. Um, but I, I did think that that made sense, that he started with the customer. But that depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And so you just have to adjust it. I guess that's fair enough. Yes? I'm sorry, so we have to cut it short here because we have another uh, session going on. Actually, we should have ended 15 minutes ago. So oh. uh, please grab hold of Laurie. I'm sure she's going to be hanging out in the, in the lobby outside. Give her a big, okay. uh, I thought I had until 1.30. <laughs> sorry. Okay, here it is. Thank you. Please leave some feedback, and um, I will upload this. I didn't. Your thank you gift is actually on my computer right now, but I will. You can have access to the uh, to the uh, the model if you're interested. So if you give feedback, then I give you a model. And if any of you are interested in listening to how the customer fights back, very much according to what you've said. Yes. Uh, One thirty. There's still some room left at the. Uh, I've never heard of this business canvas before, but how yes. do you decide what to focus on? What is your, because you're, you're, you're